What's up, everybody? Cam and Chris back again with another video. Back again. This time we got the dark story of King Von and K.I. Mm. Somebody in the comments said, check this out. Let's see. Um, I think I know a little bit about this story. Yeah, I think I've seen a little bit. I know I've seen some stuff on her for sure before because, you know, she was the female. But what connection that, they got uh, right. with each well, other? I ain't seen their story together, yeah. Let's see. On September 25, 2012, King Vaughn, a member of O Block, would encounter a rival Southside Chicago gang member by the name of K.I. on a local train ride. K.I. is a member of STL, which stands for St. Lawrence, a street in which most STL gang members reside on. STL and O Block have had a strong hatred for each other for years, and the rivalry between the two gangs has resulted in many casualties. When King Vaughn and K.I. spotted each other on the train, the two immediately began to get physical, with King Vaughn landing several punches to K.I.'s face. Mm. After the incident, King Vaughn logged onto Twitter and tweeted about the altercation with K.I., claiming that an opposing gang member got caught with their guard down on the train. K.I. would then begin to tweet about the situation herself by saying that her ear and arm are messed up. K.I. followed that tweet by also saying that she only has a bruise on her face and that she's not tripping because her 40 caliber firearm would put a hole in King Vaughn's face. This situation stemming from the altercation on the train would he soon become the start of King Vaughn and K.I. frequently- I guess she wasn't a regular girl. What'd you say? He fought a girl. Like, fought a girl. I guess. But do they, did he not look at her as a regular girl? No, that's she's saying. a like, Right, that's just it. No matter. Wow. I wonder who was with her. Was she by herself? Wow. Did you just fight a girl? I guess so. Okay, well, let's go. ...communicating with each other on social media. Just four days after the train incident, K.I. would tweet, retweet if you think I look good, in which King Vaughn would retweet shortly after. Three days later, K.I. would get into another altercation on the train, but this time with Lil Scud, oh. an old block member who was friends with King Vaughn. K.I. was eager to let this be known and quickly tweeted out that she beat up Lil Scud and to let King Vaughn know that she isn't someone to be messed with. After 30 minutes of no reply... Yeah, that's my first time hearing about Lil Scud. Yours? Yeah, I've never seen a, that picture or anything. Lil Scud? Ooh, he looks scary. <laughs> Crazy minutes of no replies, K.I. would tweet directly at King Vaughn explaining how she beat up Lil Scud all by herself and that he didn't even get one punch on her. King Vaughn would eventually reply stating that K.I. is about that life and that he may be in love with her. K.I. would respond to this by calling King Vaughn gay. <laughs> Vaughn clearly didn't appreciate that. Wait, 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 stop. Don't skip this video because I've got great news for you. K.I. not to do that and ended the conversation by saying he would treat K.I. right. King Vaughn would soon begin to direct message K.I. on Twitter with his first DM being, What up? I'm trying to change you and upgrade you. I want to nail something. What's up? <laughs> K.I. would appear to be somewhat shocked by these DMs, but King Vaughn would respond the next day, saying that it wasn't him who sent the first message, and then goes on to say that he likes K.I. for real, and that when the gang war in Chicago is over with, that he is going to be with her. K.I. would then go on to tell King Vaughn that she heard a rumor in the streets that Oblock is trying to kill her. King Vaughn would respond to those claims, stating that what she heard was true, but he doesn't think he could do it because he thinks she's actually cool. The two then discuss when they are going to stop gangbanging, to which they both reveal they believe that they are both going to die in the gang war. Mm. K.I. then goes on to say that she thinks Oblock feels threatened by her, to which King Vaughn would respond with, Look. I'm not trying to mess with you, so why are you trying to mess with me? We are just trying to get whoever. It's not like we are in a rush to get you, but I had a 9mm on me when I saw you riding my bike and was going to grab you, but the police were right there. The girl with me also had a 7mm when we saw you on the train. If we were really trying to get you, I would have took my chances then. K.I. soon responds by shouting out STL and states that she is ready to go to war with anybody. Vaughn then tells her that she doesn't always have to act tough, to which K.I. says, treat enemies like enemies. What do you expect? The next morning, K.I. would start off the day by dissing Odie Perry, a respected member of Wick City who was fatally shot just a few years prior. King Vaughn would see this tweet and respond with, see, that's why you keep getting beat up. 
K.I. then tells King Vaughn to pull up, to which he responds with, I should have pissed or spit on you after I beat you up, but I wasn't thinking. K.I. proceeds to laugh at this and tells King Vaughn to leave it in the streets. Shortly after this Twitter interaction, King Vaughn would go outside looking for K.I. and ended up running into a group of rival gang members at the local corner store. According to King Vaughn, the rival members were scared of him and had the store employees lock the door to keep him out. Mm. Vaughn would tweet about this as soon as it happened, to which K.I. would respond by saying she is on her way. King Vaughn would quickly tell her not to come since he was already leaving the store anyways. K.I. responds by calling Vaughn funny and says she'll come to wherever he is at, which Vaughn responds by telling K.I. to be smart. Four days later, King Vaughn and K.I. would continue talking in the DMs after K.I. would message Vaughn with, Where you at? Come outside. Vaughn would quickly respond to K.I. with a simple, Don't mess with me, to which K.I. would reply back, taking a slight dig at Oblock and the work they're doing in the streets. King Vaughn would then ask K.I. if she wants to have a shootout with him, to which K.I. would shockingly respond with, Hell yeah, you and your friend T-Roy. King Vaughn didn't seem to take this very seriously and responded back with, Hashtag very scary. K.I. then states that she was just around Oblock and didn't see anybody outside. Vaughn would soon reply saying that they're busy with other things but that they will see them soon. K.I. would then tell King Vaughn that she thinks they are scared of them, to which King Vaughn replies with a simple, Ha! The conversation would then go dark for three days until King Vaughn would randomly message K.I. saying, What's up? When are you going to let your hair down and put on a tight dress for me? I would risk my life to get some of that. Oh K.I. did not respond to this message. <laughs> After that message, the two didn't speak to each other for about a week. But then on October 24, 2012, K.I. would announce on Twitter that she would be going to Swisher Suites, a popular store located in Oblock territory. Mm. King Vaughn would reply to this tweet moments later saying, don't do that. Today is not the day. K.I. would then respond by saying that she never even sees King Vaughn despite the fact that she's always outside. Mm. Vaughn would then say, I saw you before, right or wrong. K.I. would respond with, yeah, but ever since then I feel like you've been hiding because I've been coming through your territory ever since. King Vaughn replies with, I've been going to Rhodes, but I think when you come over here, I be over here. Oh. K.I. ends the conversation with a simple LOL. Two days later, K.I. would suddenly post a tweet stating that King Vaughn was a goofy who got beat up by her friend FBG Butta just two years prior. King Vaughn would see this tweet and soon reply back saying, and you know the other stuff I did to you guys, right? To which K.I. would say, you think you're drilling but you need practice. King Vaughn fires back by denying that he needs drilling practice in which K.I. responds by saying, Vaughn is saying too much for Twitter and that Vaughn's friend Sheroid, an Oblock member who was fatally shot a few months prior, knows about her. King Vaughn then laughs at K.I. for saying on GD, then proceeds to tell her that she can ask her dead friends about him. Three days later, K.I. would tweet at King Vaughn saying, I want to meet King Vaughn face to face, in which Vaughn would respond with, LOL, you don't really want that, Kira. K.I. would then respond with, see, you don't think I'm tough. Four days later, K.I. would once again tweet at King Vaughn, saying that she hopes people in Oblock don't actually call Vaughn King Vaughn and that it's suspect if you do. Mm. King Vaughn would respond back by claiming that he earned the name King Vaughn. K.I. responds by bringing up the fact that Vaughn used to get beat up back in the day. Vaughn replied back laughing at the fact that K.I. was even talking about getting beat up and that if it wasn't for guns, he would be walking up and down their block all day. Six days later, King Vaughn would make a tweet about K.I. saying that she sounds good on the phone. This would indicate that King Vaughn and K.I. physically talked on the phone with each other and didn't just message each other back and forth on social media. Vaughn would also make a tweet several hours later complaining that K.I. hasn't answered her phone all day. King Vaughn would eventually get arrested on November 20th, 2012 for unlawful use of a weapon by a fleet. November 20th, 2012 for unlawful they said she did somebody. Let's hold up. Let's go back. Let me. I'm gonna just go from right here. Okay. Would not reply directly to this tweet, but moments later tweeted, "How does it feel to lose your friend while behind bars?" Referring to the death of Jay Money, one of the top Jay, members of Oblock, who was fatally shot during Vaughn's incarceration. King Vaughn wouldn't say anything about the tweet, but would later tweet "R.I.P. Jay Money" in honor of him. K.I. would soon retweet this as a way of taunting him to which King Vaughn would quickly compose a tweet discussing Crack and Modell, two STL gang members who unfortunately passed away. 
While all of this was going on, Oblock was already making plans to avenge J Money after word got out that an STL gang member by the name of Lil B was allegedly responsible for the death of J Money. Oblock was ready for Lil B, but before they could meet face to face, Lil B was fatally shot by the Chicago Police Department in March of 2014 after reportedly pointing a gun at one of the officers. This means that Oblock would not be able to avenge one of their top members and were now looking for the next best thing. On April 10th, 2014, KI would release a series of tweets regarding her future. The tweets state, I do what I do because I know God has a day for me. You're nobody until someone kills you. That's just real. I've seen too many of my friends in a casket. Less than 24 hours after posting those tweets online, KI and several others were standing outside of a home on the 6400 block of South Eberhardt when a man exited the passenger side of a blue Oldsmobile that was parked facing eastbound on the corner of 65th and Eberhardt. The man proceeded to walk northbound on Eberhardt and quickly began shooting at the group of people standing in front of the house. The suspect would then retreat back to the getaway vehicle and flee the scene going eastbound on 65th Street. Three individuals were hit during the situation and were immediately rushed to nearby hospitals. The first victim was an unidentified male who got shot in his right foot and survived his injuries. The second victim was rumored to be FBG Butta, the same individual that KI claimed to have beaten up King Vaughn in the past. Butta was shot in the right knee and also survived his injuries. The third and final victim was shot seven times and passed away from their injuries during surgery at the hospital. That individual was KI. So, Detectives would arrive to the crime scene shortly after and began- That's pretty much saying they were aiming for her? They shot her seven oh, yeah. times, yeah, and everybody else just got hit. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. not even seriously hit. She got hit seven times. Yeah, they was aiming for her. Wow. Yeah. Because they said the group of people, so there's probably right. more people out there. Right, but only three got hit, and she got seven of those. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. And to interview anyone who saw what happened. While there were many witnesses on scene, most of them provided detectives with vague details about the case with some of them even admitting that they are scared to cooperate. However, certain witnesses gave the detectives a similar story, stating that a man wearing dark colored clothing approached the house and began to open fire while yelling things at them. These witnesses would also give detectives a name of someone who they think may have committed the crime, a name in which the Chicago Police Department were already quite familiar with. Over the next couple of days, authorities would continue to investigate the homicide of K.I. and eventually developed a photo spread of potential suspects. Witnesses were soon called in to view the photo spread and almost all of them were quick to point out the same suspect whose name was given to detectives on the day of the crime. Then on April 29, 2014, just 18 days after the murder of K.I., Davon Bennett, a.k.a. King Vaughn, was taken into custody by Officer Fernandez of the Chicago Police Department's Fugitive Apprehension Unit to be interviewed by detectives. At around 1 p.m., King Vaughn was placed in an interview room where two detectives began to question him about his involvement in K.I.'s murder. Vaughn would quickly deny all involvement and stated that he doesn't even know K.I. and never goes around 65th Street. The detectives would then ask Vaughn if he would be willing to do a polygraph examination to which he would agree to do and was given food and water. While this interview was taking place, four cooperating witnesses were called in so they could view an in-person lineup of the suspects. The first witness to view the lineup told authorities that they were unable to identify the suspect while the second witness pointed to King Vaughn and said it could possibly be the suspect but wasn't sure. The third witness couldn't make an identification but verbally told detectives it was King Vaughn. The fourth and final <laughs> witness viewed the lineup and pointed directly to King Vaughn. Two assistant state attorneys would then arrive shortly after and began to review all the evidence in the K.I. case. Detectives would then go back to the interview room to check King Vaughn, where Vaughn would begin to tell detectives that he changed his mind and will no longer do a polygraph exam. King Vaughn then starts giving detectives an alibi, claiming that he checked in at his parole office on the day of K.I.'s death. Detectives immediately started looking into Vaughn's alibi and was able to confirm that he did in fact check in at his parole office, but there was still 30 minutes of unexplained time where he could have still committed the crime. Hmm. Then on April 30th, 2014, the Cook County State Attorney's Office would announce that they are declining to prosecute King Vaughn for the murder of K.I. due to inconsistencies in the witness statements. Hmm. This would mean that internally this case is solved according to the Chicago Police Department, but to the public this case is still unsolved with the suspect still at large. King Vaughn was then released from police custody around 6.30 p.m. that same night. Less than two hours later, King Vaughn would tweet, I'm so happy and grateful. I'm too real for this. Wow, so 
King Vaughn would then go on and get arrested for another murder less than three months later. He sat in the Cook County oh Jail for goodness. over three years while awaiting trial. During the trial, King Vaughn was acquitted of all charges due to lack of evidence and was released back into the free world. After being released, lifelong friend and rapper Lil Durk would take King Vaughn under his wing and attempt to turn him into a gangster rap superstar. Within a matter of months, King Vaughn would become one of the top street rappers in the music industry, with his music surpassing tens of millions of streams each month, and even mm. received co-signs from A-list celebrities such as NBA star LeBron James. Then, on November 6, 2020, King Vaughn's iconic music career would be cut short after he was fatally shot in Atlanta during an altercation with another rapper. King Vaughn was 26 years old at the time. Mm. <laughs> Stay out the streets. Okay, I just need to, first of all, why was he in there talking to them without his attorney? It seemed like to me, like, when they said he was in there and was willing to do the polygraph test, mm -hmm. and then he came back and said, never mind. I don't know. Because why was he even, how did he even get to that point? He should have been like. I don't know. Maybe he that. didn't do it, and maybe he um, just was saying, mm -hmm. I do the polygraph. No, I ain't do it. Right. And yeah, then somebody told him, don't do that. Even if yeah. you didn't do it, mm -hmm. don't do that's that. That's true. That's true, too. Or he was trying to fool them by saying, I'll take a polygraph. I know I ain't do it. And then when they brought it out for real, he was like, yeah, Ooh, never mind. Nah, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it could go either way. Yeah, I'm kind of sweating <laughs> again, man. Yeah, yeah, that's all right, yeah. Y'all can talk to my pro officer. I already told y'all. Right, I was with him. So wow. But that that's a uh, that's a lot of back and forth. Yeah, right. But these people be knowing each other, so it's like you know, they some of these people grow up together, and then they become enemies. How do like, you see? Okay, they saw each other on the train. They had a fight. They had a fight on the train. Mm-hmm. And then she had got back on the train again. Had another fight with somebody right. else. That's this, crazy. She was tough. She was playing. Wow. Like, that's why I'm like, you fight a girl. I guess she was fighting now, I guess. She was fighting now. Yeah. I guess so. Wow. Okay, that was interesting. Yeah. Thank y'all for watching. That's the story sad. of King Von and Kay. Another sad Both story. Both of them gone. Both of them gone. Uh, y'all like the video. Thank y'all. Subscribe. See y'all.